Hi everyone, it's Eddie here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you some uh, cool I learned. And I'm using a dirty plate, I know that, but I like that. It's very cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you How do you create grungy prints like this where you rub off some of the paint and it it creates this really cool texture kind of vibey thing so let's try it out so you want something that's not like a you want a thicker paint so you want a paint um, that's probably opaque um, a little heavier, you, you, craft paints are good for this. I'm gonna try today this um, Burnt Umber from Liquitex. And um, you don't obviously need to have tons, but you just need to allow it to dry for a couple of minutes. Nothing, you know, you don't wanna dry it out completely. You wanna dry it enough where when you start rubbing it, little pieces, you know, sections come off or areas uh, rub off and and then we can add uh, a pickup color to uh, show that through and I'm already we're already halfway there because the plate like I said it's already had stuff on it so you can see like that um, terracotta is going to show through there and there's some reds and we got our browns so um, I'm gonna let this dry for a couple minutes and then come back and give a little rubby rubby and um, take off some of that paint. And um, yeah, that's it. All right, let's see. This is about, yeah, you see? So, great. Pull some stuff off there. Go bigger if you want. Just go wacky, right? This one still a little bit wet, but we can. There we go. Work that out. Now you figure you're gonna get a little dirty. That's okay. Let's just paint. It'll wash off. All right. I mean, this is almost dry, so um, it just needs a couple more minutes, and then we'll put a final layer on and pull it. Got to clean my phalanges now. All right. This is dry enough. I'm gonna squeeze out the last bit of this deep gold. Uh, acrylic from Amsterdam on my plate and use that to pick up. Oh, okay. Just moving in a grooving. I kind of learned this by accident. I was testing out a, um, a, a print I was working on on a plate and I accidentally grabbed the plate when it was still too, a little bit too damp and rubbed off some pieces and I knew something, let me play with it. And that's how I got there. So let's go ahead and put this paper down. I'm using the Hammer Mill 32 pound color copy paper. This is a favorite of mine. I'll give this a good burnish with the Baron. So that it all makes good contact. Make sure that your edges are nice and um, nice and rubbed down. So you'll see, you get this really cool print that's got this gold, but it's like grungy too, and it's it's really cool. It's a cool way to do um, texture and effects. So we'll see how that turns out. Oh, here, this is fun. Okay, so <laughs> I used some uh, red um, soft body acrylic on a Halloween card the other day I was making for someone. And um, I had a little bit extra, so I thinned it out with some water and just put it all over the gel plate. It's been dry for a couple of days now, so um, I think we can add, let's see, what color do we want to add to this? Should we do a... 
Naples Yellow. Let's do Naples Yellow. This is a nice paint from um, uh, uh, Lucas Krill. And um, it's got white in it. See, PW6, that's a white, that's permanent white six. So it's definitely um, gonna work for us. Oh. Might be too much, I think we're okay though. So again, just spray it out, let it dry for a little bit, and then start rubbing off sections with uh, your hand fingers your god-given tools let me get this on this side that's cool huh already yeah there's some bits on there from the, the brown you wipe this down watch that dry i'll be right back I think it's ready. This, I tested it up here and I'm still a little too wet. So you see the line is, like the outline is kind of a little too clean. So I think we're ready now. Yeah, that's better. I'm gonna just try like the, the, the that part of my finger. Some of this is still a little bit, oh, that's not bad. This is a great, um, technique to do with kids if you're teaching uh, a child how to uh, gel plate I think this is a great way to get them excited about it because they love using their fingers in art I know my nephew does he loves really just getting into it we have to put on we have to give him a um, an old t-shirt of ours of mine to wear when we do art because it gets everywhere because he's so excited I think this would be great for for the kiddos. Okay. So, as you can see, it's dry enough to do this, but it still needs to completely dry um, before we put the next layer on, because otherwise, take some of that little crumbs off. Um, otherwise, it's just going to um, pull up whatever you, a lot of what you have already, so. Just be very careful. I'm just taking off this little excess. I, I didn't do on the last one and that's why my brayer got all foofy. So let me clean this up and I'll be right back. All right, so for the final layer, I decided to use a primary blue. This is uh, Cyan from Amsterdam Acrylics, number 572 if you're interested. Let's see here. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to re-up on this one. This is a great color, great paint. It's transparent, um, and it's it's your basic blue that you can mix all sorts of colors with. So, good to have in your arsenal. I'm going to put a little bit more. It's dry here today, like not like hot dry it's just dry and uh, things are drying quickly <laughs> So this print pretty much has like the three basic, uh, the three primary colors, the yellow, red, and blue. So we'll see how this turns out for us. I think it'll be cool. Gonna clean the paint off of there. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. Make sure you give this a good, good rub-a-dub-dub -dub so that we get nice full contact. And let's see if we can get an idea of what it's going to look like. That's kind of cool, huh? Very, very cool. I like it. Uh, let's see if this one is ready. Okay. Let's see if this one's ready. This is the first one we did. It's still... Hmm. Let me think here. 
do I dare pull it? I think it's good. I think we're good. This is a beauty. Look at that. Saucy. How brilliant is that? The colors just go so well together. And you can see the that the the stuff that was left on the plate there. You can still see that. But that's oh my fingerprint is there. But isn't that great? Yeah, so if you commit a, if you commit crimes and you don't want to get caught, don't do this with your fingers. Use somebody else's finger. Just kidding. I really like that. I think that turned out super, super nice. So now we have a clean plate. So I think we could start. Um, let's start with some stamping. I got my one of my new stamps. This is Bobble Eye. And it comes in two sizes. There is this large, uh, the larger one. And there is the itty bitty one. So these come in these two sizes. You can get them at pmartiststudio.com. And with my special discount, Eddie Fan 10, you get 10% off the already um, the, the, the price. Here we go. So I'll tell you exactly. This one is two inches. Because I'm I'm measuring from the end of the design, not the actual foam, but the end uh, end to end of the design. That's two inches. And this, I believe, is two and a half. No, this one's three. Okay. So this one's three inches. So there you go. I, 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 I like the idea of using both because you can get a, a really cool, like, a pattern going, almost like wallpaper, vintage wallpaper, um, or just one or whatever, you know, to add a little extra something. So I'm going to try using both of those. And, um, but I need to choose a color to start with. Hmm, I'm thinking, for some reason, I want to say pink. I don't know why. Pink on the brain. But no, 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 no. Let's think about this. All right, so I went ahead and I put down some of the burnt umber on my 5x7 plate. And this is from another video of leftovers. But you let it build up and then you pull it and get cool prints out of that. And then I'm going to add this uh, metallic gold. It's it's a, a cheapo one, but it, it, you know, it works. And it's not, I like it because it's not like super strong glittery. Um, but added to another color, it gives it a nice, a nice pop. Mixed, and then we'll do a we'll stamp a pattern. Let's see how's that look. Mm, got a little bit. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. I think I got this for forty cents. They were on sale one day. I forgot where. I think it's Joanne's. They were, I got a bunch of them for forty cents each. And that was when I started gel plating, and I only used the craft paints or the less expensive paints. And that's kind of what you want to do when you start because that is a great way to learn without breaking the bank. I need a smaller brayer. Here we use this. Just even it out. All right, let's get some paint on these. And I'm gonna turn this sideways, actually. Do the landscape version. And you can use what's on the brayer on the stamp. And I think I'm just gonna stamp out a pattern across. That way it can be used as a journal page, right? That would be cool. Yeah, I 
it's okay that it's a little squidgy. I don't mind that. Because my goal is to kind of create like a vintage wallpaper looking print. All right, so we have that one. Let's put in some small ones in between. Large one. And uh, just an FYI, I always remind people when you're using the foam stamps with acrylic paint, be sure to um, give them a nice clean when you're done so that you the paint doesn't stick and you don't get um, and you don't ruin your stamp. I think maybe here. And we'll do the small one on this side here. Oops. A little bit here, a little bit there, maybe some there, and here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. There we go. Let's let this dry and I'll come back and we can, um, we'll go ahead and add another layer. Okay. This is dry and this is where the pink is going to come in. I'm going to use this rose color from Lucas Krill. And I think um, that'll give us a nice background. Well, you know what? Do I want this pink? I also have this darker pink. We could do a combination. How about that? We we'll just do a little bit of both. And these are both opaque. Um, although this one says semi opaque, but that's okay because they both have white in them. So these will be, um, this paint will be easy to rub off. It's a good candidate for this technique. Okay. Come on, Pinky. There we go. I'm going to leave that alone and um, let that dry. Let's unveil this one. This is the second one we did. Let's see. That's nice. How cool is that? And you can feel the texture, especially from the, the brush, um, the, the, the paint I brushed on initially that's another good idea is when you have extra paint from another project slap it on a gel plate create stuff and then pick it up later you know build it up maybe you pick it up later with something else and make some cool prints that's what i do with my five by seven i use it as a palette and then um once everything's dry i come back with a, um, another paint and i pick it up and it creates some really interesting some of my favorite prints that's a great idea 
This is awesome. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but it'll be used for something. That is for sure. Set this aside, that other one. That's so cool. And let me... So I'm gonna let that other uh, one dry, the one with the pink, and then uh, we'll finish it up. All right, we're dry. So let's... Um, kind of think about this. I don't want like, hmm. I think I'm just gonna go for it. Um, I'm gonna try and, and just make thinner lines maybe. Thinner, maybe just smaller. That. Longer. And the color we put behind it will come through, but it won't overpower the entire print. Do some larger ones. I grew up in a house with a lot of old wallpaper, so I know what it looks like. Uh, there were some walls that had about five layers of wallpaper from, you know, probably the 50s, you know, going forward. All right. So, let me see if I can get some of that off. It's not much, which is good. Some of that little, the little flecks of paint. So this is our print so far. And I was thinking a, a green behind it. So let's see, fern. No. How about mint? Oh yeah, the mint will look cool. Maybe just darken it up a little bit with some other green maybe. Let's uh, see if my palette is dry enough. No, that's, that's wet, it's mojado. So let's just mix it up here. I'm gonna do it on a silicone mat. It's easy to clean up and I, um, a nice mix. So let's pour some of this. This is mint from Lucas Krill, number 4762. Another um, semi-transparent or semi-opaque paint. And it's got some permanent green. Let's see where my greens are. It's a cooler green, so I'm gonna use the sap green to go along with it. Not too much. We'll mix it in little by little and see what, see what we get. See, that's a very strong green, that the sap green. Use a little more of this. I think I'm happy with that. Put that up there. This should be enough to, to cover some of that over here. Where's my Baron? There we are. I think, I'm excited for this one. I think it'll come out very cool. But whatever, however it turns out, it's only paper and paint. 
And a lot of what I do is I just experiment. I usually just turn the camera on and I'm like, okay, let's do this, let's do that. I sort of have an idea. That's what I'm talking about. A vintagey looking wall. That's like the, the, the colors from the 50s, right? Like the, that, that minty um, green, um, then the, uh, the pinks and the browns. It's like Neapolitan ice cream with thrown in with some pistachio ice cream. All right, this has to dry. And uh, I'll clean up and I'll be right back. All right, it's time to unveil our final print. This is the vintage wall using my new stamp. Good so far. Ooh, that is fantastic. Very, very cool. Like I was saying, you could easily make this a journal page. How great is that? Or even like the middle. That is pretty cool. So, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson um, on turning your mistakes into really cool prints on a gel plate. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your um, viewership and support. I will see you very soon.